Guys? Hello? Alright, so let me see if I can fix something. Guys? Hmm. I'm not sure if this is working. Sorry I'm a little late, but let me see if I can fix this first before I start speaking to myself. Guys? Hmm. I'm not sure if this is working. Sorry I'm a little late. But let me see if I can fix this. First before I start speaking to myself. Alright, so I put up a comment on the YouTube page. I don't know, I'm not entirely sure what you guys are watching on, but I'll put a comment on the YouTube page and hopefully Alright guys. Oh yeah, so let me just double check in a couple of seconds here. Guys. Oh. Alright. I'm going to try to fix this. Just give me one sec. Am I the only one watching? Um, do you guys should have a questions box? on the left and in addition you guys should have a couple other ways to interact I'm not really sure if I'm the only one here but that would not be great alright let me see if I can fix this um, I'm gonna just head over to my email see if anyone emailed and then that would be helpful maybe if you get a log or something nothing's coming from my peer chat which means everyone is just doing just fine let me just check my peer chat log That'd be interesting. Guys, one way or another, um, try to let me know if you're here because I don't see any point in doing this if no one is here. And that would be pretty weird. I can't speak to myself. Let me look at my log. It looks like, um, it looks like we have 4 p.m. Now uh, what do we have? We don't have really much here. We have got okay, we have a couple weird ones. Looks like no one really signed up. Um hold on.
Okay, it looks like we have one person. That's a start. Um, let's try to get a couple more people before I really get on to doing this. I'd say I'd wait until about 5.30, so um, Lily Grace, if you could wait until 5.30, about nine minutes, that would be wonderful. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can get a couple more people, and that would be pretty useful to really get a conversation going. I thought this would be a really interesting way to interact with everyone about the regions that are coming up tomorrow. So we will be doing this again, I believe, for the trigonomic regions. Let me just see if I can get this to go. Alright, so we have 5.30. Ah, so I said the event initially start at 5.30. So that's why no one really showed up just yet. That's perfectly fine. We'll start at 5.30 on the dot, and it'll last until about 8.30, I guess. All right, about five minutes to go until the actual event. Looks like um, we're doing pretty well. Uh, let me know if you can't hear me, if the audio is unclear. I'm not using a external microphone, but um, I will invest in one soon. But for now, I guess this has to work.
All right, so I have tried to increase the volume. Hopefully, um, hopefully I'm not doing so terribly. There is a questions bar. Well, if you're on the Google Hangouts edition and not the YouTube edition, even if you're on the YouTube edition, actually, it should give you a method of going over to the Google Handouts edition, which is a better uh, better interface, I guess, because there is a questions bar on the right hand side, just in case uh, you feel like I went over a term too quickly or you weren't able to fully understand a term. It would be helpful to just give me, um, and I'm here for a question right now, just to test. Um, how the questions uh, interface is working. I want to make sure that this works out well. We have about three minutes to go until the actual event. Let's see what we have here. We have folks like my students are logging in at 4:24. That's a while ago, actually. 3:58, 4:24. Looks like we're doing better. All right, not to shed. All right, guys, looks like we have about uh, 45 seconds left. Um, if you're on the YouTube page, you should try to uh, move over to the Google Hangouts page. On the bottom left, there should be a be part of the conversation. Click to join live Q&A on Google Plus Hangouts. That would be your best way to access this video. Great. Thank you, Osana. Hmm. Mm. Still waiting on Oswin. Farhan did not sign up for an account yet, but Osman just did. So that should be useful. Well, let me see if everything works. Just testing out the. Oh, I've never done this before. Alright, my Wacom tablet is ready to go. I have the info there. Let me see if this works. Yes, great. Oh, okay.
Hmm. Uh, let me see this. It's Shine World. I'm not entirely sure who you are, but it looks like, yeah, for now, we are the only ones. I guess I'll give everyone another, I don't know, two minutes or so. I want to get started. So it's an interesting interface. Mm, let's see what I have in store. All right, Lily, I'll start in about one minute, still waiting on about uh, two to three more people. Maybe they can probably go back to the podcast um, if they missed the start, I guess. We do have three people, but that's fairly slow. So I do want to wait for, let's say, five. Oh, and look, we have Farhan, who has just signed up for an account. That is wonderful. Let me just uh, pop him out here and link him to, well, Farhan has just signed up for an account. Let me just make him his page, and then we can go there. Because, sorry for the delay, guys. Let me just help out Farhan here, and then we should be... Just all right. Right, waiting for Farhan to log in. Asana, um, Farhan just signed up for an account, so I'm just waiting for him to uh, go through the process of logging in and getting to the link, and he should be here any minute, and then we should be good to go. Sorry about the delay. As usual, you can expect Farhan to
Oh, you guys, hope you're still here. Sorry for that hiccup. I just refreshed the window, and that just happened to happen. Let me see if Farhan needs help, and then we should be good to go. All right, guys, um, those who are still here, just uh, right. I'm here. I think we're about to start. I'm not entirely sure if Farhan is in or yet, but I have tried to help him as much as I can. And even if he cannot come, uh, this podcast will be recorded, so you'll be able to view it later. I really want to start now because we do not have all day, so I am going to just really want to get started over here. So just... Um, Type a letter or something um, into the questions box when so you're here, so I know who is here and who is not. That would be extremely helpful. All right, guys. Farhan, are you here yet? You should have a questions box on the right, or I'm not entirely sure if you're watching on the YouTube page, which wouldn't be too optimal. But if you are, then you can comment, and I'll still get that on the questions box, I believe. All right, guys. Guys, are we all here? Asman, are you here? Farhan, are you here? Afsan, are you here? Is everyone here? No feedback probably means we're not here. Hmm, how do I fix the situation? Uh, technology is still not great. Great, left a note there, so it'll be helpful for those who just enter. Guys, all right, so let's start. All right, so over here, what I have here is, um, I can't really see that stream, so right, that's not useful. Let me just move that over to the side so I can see your questions also. So 
what I have here is a list of terms that um, I feel like are very uh, pivotal for you guys to dwell on the uh, on the regions, right? Um, I have looked to the past, I would say, six to seven regions, and I've compiled this list of terms from those regions from wrong answer choices, correct answer choices, any answer choices that I really felt, you know, um, had vocabulary that wasn't commonplace. Now, well, obviously, there are... Oh, Farhan has started a chat. Let me just go back to him, guys. Just give me one second. Great, Faria. Thank you. I'm just confirming uh, Farhan's request. Uh, let me just link him into the room, and that will be helpful. Great. I have just given Farhan the link. Hopefully, that helps him, and we are good to go. Hi, Faria, by the way. All right. So, yeah, so I've compiled this list of terms. I feel like it's important to go over. We're going to talk about each in some detail. I'm not going to completely go in depth into each of these because I feel um, that going in depth would uh, um, involve too much information in your brains and I'm not entirely sure if you could cram all of that the night before the exam. Um, I might type up everything that I'm going to say, everything that I have said actually later on and I might post that around 10, 30, 11 if I feel necessary or if you guys email me and ask if that would be helpful. Otherwise you can just listen and re-listen to the podcast I think it's very, very helpful to know all of these terms. Now, um, let's start. Okay, Farhan. Why does Farhan always do this? All right. Hopefully, Farhan's in here. I have sent him the link. Okay, great. So, let's start with the French and Indian War. Um, obviously, I have the dates there. Dates are not important. Try not to focus too much on the dates. There are Norwegian's questions that are going to ask on the date. So, French and Indian War, what do we know about it? Well, we know that, uh, well, let's start with the proclamation of 1763 because that ended the French Indian War, right? And the French Indian War is important because although it was a British victory and although um, people say that it was a very important war, it actually hurt the British more than um, it helped them even though they won the war because of the cost of the war, right? So they lost a lot of money um, fighting the war and even though they acquired some territory in the French Indian War, um, they really lost more than they gained, right? So if you know, want to know the rundown, um, what happened was uh, they they fought the war and and they fought the war with the with the French, obviously, and they're fighting over land. And uh, what ended up happening was uh, there was like an imaginary line drawn um, on the Appalachian Mountains, and that was pretty much the point up to where. Hold on, I get me to the chat from Farhan. And that was really up to the point where. Oh, great, we have six years now. Yeah, and that was really up to the point where uh, the, the British could occupy. However, with its acquired land and even its value included, the cost, the amount of men, the amount, not only the amount of men actually, the amount of money that it cost to uh, uh, really fund this war really hurt the British and really, you know, put them into large amounts of debt. So what, the, what happened was this war actually led to the Revolutionary War, right? Kind of indirectly, maybe many people say directly, but the idea is that, you know, what happens? So the British is broke, right? They have no money. They just got all this land, and, you know, they don't, they don't know what to do with it, right? So what happens is they have these settlers. They have, you know, the United States citizens. Well, they're actually the new, they're actually the new British. And what happens is... um. And they try to recover the money. So how do they try to recover the money? Well, obviously they use all the taxes on the on the on the Americans, all the all the T X, stamp X, all of them, whatever you name. They they try to recover all of this money, and then what happened was well, um, well they tried to recover all this money, and obviously the Americans weren't so intent on paying because of the British mistakes, and that led to the the, the Revolutionary War because the Americans felt that taxation to representation was incredibly wrong. Right, so so that's really the French Indian War. Know that even though the British won, the British did not gain. Uh, the British gained some territory, but their costs were much higher than what they gained, right? Than their winnings. All right, our Articles of Confederation. Articles of Confederation is uh, was an agreement, right, among the thirteen founding states, uh, established the founding of the United States of America. Um, really, what it says is that it states that these thirteen states, right, are now have now some sort of sovereignty, right, as in like they they're now act as one. Right, and the Articles of Confederation also drafts um, the original Constitution. Obviously, this Constitution is revised to add the Bill of Rights and become more, you know, legitimate. Um, but this is kind of like a draft of the Confederation per se, right? And it was drafted by the uh, 
by the Continental Congress, right? And this happened sometime in, you know, 1776, something like that. And um, what happened was, it was, it happened in 1776, it was ratified about one year later, and eventually it was ratified by all 13 states. And this was really the one document that united all 13, um, 13 states, right? And it provided some domestic and international legitimacy, as you know, this is one nation, not just 13 random pieces of land, but one nation together as one. Just know that it was like a draft of the Constitution, per se, right? Nothing too difficult. Uh, moving on, Constitution, we all know, pretty easy, not not too difficult. We all know it has a Bill of Rights, has a, a law of the land, something, you know, we can all talk about. But okay, Constitutional Con Convention of 1787. Now, that's actually pretty important, actually, right? The, Constitu the Constitutional Convention of 1787, right, pretty much illustrated um, where there was a Virginia plan, right, that was led by James Madison, where we have a strong uh, national government, versus the New Jersey plan, which is, you know, for the small states, right? Obviously, New Jersey is a small state, Virginia is a larger state. Now, think of the small state versus big state, right? Here we have representation based on pop uh, population or just straightforward representation, right? And this is where we get to the Great Compromise, right? Because what happens in the in the Constitutional Convention is that obviously the small states think it's unfair to do it based on population as the House of Representatives is now, right? The Jersey panelists know they just have, you know, a set amount of electors, a set amount of representatives based on each state, not based on population, but the same for each state. So let's say New York had two, then, uh, or I don't know, Texas would have two. Right or um, Rhode Island would have to. Right, everyone has to. Right, but um, what the what the other one says, what the Virginia plan says, is no. Let's actually base on population because more population needs uh, more re representatives. Right, because people have misbelieved and stuff like that, and they're and you should do it definitely based on population. And they they go on and on about this for a while. And it's really interesting, but, but the idea is that eventually they settle upon what's called the bicameral legisl legislator, right, where they have, uh, where they have uh, the Senate, which is not based on population, the House of Representatives, re representatives, which is based on uh, population, right, so they kind of, you know, have, like, what's called the Great Compromise, per se, so that's always very interesting. Uh, moving on, the Three-Fifth Compromise, honestly not related, but I just saw in the same section of the U.S., the U.S. history is one of them. Um, the Truth is Compromise is just um, when you're counting the slaves um, after the Civil War, when you're counting the slaves, the slaves count as three-fifths of a person. So not a full person, slaves counts as three-fifths of a person, hence the name. Um, Anti-Federalists and Federalists um, are very important. Um, going back to the topic in the Constitutional Convention, we have what? Well, the Anti-Federalists were, um, were people that felt that... Uh, that weakening the state's power would lead to an oppressive government power, right? So what does that mean? That means that if we utilize so much power, if we give so much power to the national government, then guess what? The states are not left with any power. Now, who would say that? Well, anti federalists were like, you know, small farmers that really felt like the land was important. Who else would say that? Um, Tom Paine, Sam Adams, they're, they're pretty important people that really said that. Um, yeah, also anti federalists really pushed for the Bill of Rights, right? Anti federalists really, really push for the Bill of Rights. I'm getting a lot of comments and stuff like that. But let me just, you know, see, make sure I'm doing everything correctly. Okay, great. Yeah, so the Anti-Federalists, they really push for the Bill of Rights. They're like, you know, where's the Bill of Rights? I want a document that says, you know, that I have rights. And, you know, the Federalists like, oh, no, no, no. It's important that we have a strong national government, right? Because then how do we have a hegemony, right? How do we prove to the world that, you know, this is a strong United States one? What was the initial Articles of Confederation based on, right? Showing that the, the 13 states are not just 13 states, but they're one entire country, right? That's bound together. So they felt like, you know, the nation, the, 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 the country needs a lot of, um, needs a lot of, you know, power in order to show that, right? And they kind of, you know, they, they supported the Constitution. They had, they supported a merit-based or, or, or Aristocracy, they support uh, or aristocracy. They supported. Um, uh, they wanted virtuous leaders, as in like you know, smart people um, leading um, the strong central government. They really felt was important. Um, they felt like you know, even if you had someone become like a dictator, you still have the separation of powers, and you still have your checks and balances, and that would kind of you know help ease the transition, as in to say, no one person is going to be in power, but you know, you don't have to worry. So federalist believe in strong central government, anti-federalists believe in state power, that's really the divide you have to know. And who won? Well, the federalists won, right, obviously. And the federalists won, why? Because they added the Bill of Rights, which was enough to appease the anti-federalists. Not too bad. Adding an amendment process, this is a long and overdrawn process. Honestly, I don't speak too much about it, but I guess since we are there, uh, we, we should have to speak about it a little bit. Um, adding an amendment process, pretty much, you know, someone in Congress brings up an amendment, is bought apart in the rule, in the rule board, um, they see if it's a good amendment. Obviously, there's been committees, and they talk about the amendment. And if it's ratified by two-thirds, 
um, throughout the Congress, and we have what's called an amendment. Now, moving on, foreign policy of George Washington, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson. Um, that's pretty important, actually. Uh, when, when America started on, right, so when America started on, obviously you just fought the Revolutionary War, and these are like your first three, and what would you want? Well, obviously, you do not want to get into any wars. You don't want to get into foreign people's conflict. Why? Because you do not have the resources to do so, and you do not want to create en enemies. You might want to create allies and stuff like that, but you don't want to risk creating enemies because that will lead to another war, and you would not be able to fund that, and you would die, and you would not have a nation anymore. So George Washington, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson, usually um, they press what's called an isolationist kind of perspective as, you know, let's, let's stay out of war as much as possible. Right, moving on. Uh, what else do we have? We have judicial review, right? Now, all right, so what I initially had in, had, had in my mind was as I wrote stuff, as I was saying stuff, I would write it down. Obviously, I'm not writing stuff down, so hopefully um, I will probably give you guys... Um, a type up of everything I'm gonna, everything I have said. I think that would be most useful. Maybe I'll write something as we go on, but I guess you know one of those will have to do. Judicial review, we should all know, right? Judicial review, court for court, is like the power of a court to review the constitutional, constitutional, like you know, if like a law or if an amendment or if a bill is constitutional or not, right? So they're like the final people. The Supreme Court is really what the judicial review accounts for, but the Supreme Court has the final authority on noting if a bill is constitutional or not, and if the deem it is unconstitutional, then it has to go back, right? Obviously, this is some checks and balances, so the uh, Supreme Court can't determine everything to be unconstitutional. Obviously, Congress can still override it. But, um, yeah, so now, now here's the thing. Marbury versus Madison is a very landmark Supreme Court case. Very, very landmark Supreme Court case. Right? This is like the case everyone knows about. Um, so Marbury versus Madison pretty much, um, well, I'll give you a little bit of backstory, right? So what happened was, uh, we had, well, we had really Marbury, and what happened was he was appointed um, as Supreme Court Justice by John Adams. Now, what happened was John Adams, right before he was supposed to, like, you know, leave office, he, like, hired all of these midnight judges, per se, right? And he offered these midnight judges commissions and stuff, like, you know, to take the job on such a short notice. And what happened was, you know, then John Adams went out of office because he obviously right before he had to leave office. And then what happened? And we have Marbury, Mr. William Marbury over here. And he was like, okay, I want my commission. Well, guess what? Who's the new president? It's not John Adams anymore. It is James Madison, right? So he tries to get, you know, his commission. And guess what? Marbury petitions the Supreme Court and uh, to get that commission. Guess what? Supreme Court says, yeah, yeah. Supreme Court's like, yeah, you do deserve to have that commission. You do deserve it. But guess what? We cannot give it to you. Why can't we give it to you? Because we don't have the authority, authority to do so. We only have the authority to, um, you know, say bills or something or is unconstitutional. We do not have the authority to direct the president to give you something, right? So guess what? They're like, yeah, you do deserve it, but we are not going to compel um, James Madison to give you that document. And that's pretty important, right? That's always pretty important to um, know. All right, I have a couple more comments. All right. Hold on, I'm getting a couple emails. Osman. Okay, yeah. I was gonna ask for the crash course. Sent him that and then okay, hopefully he's here now. Okay. So yeah, I'm probably gonna type up something, everything, in case, whatever. All right, let's get to work. All right, so moving on. So yeah, so the petition was therefore denied because Marbury um, was it was unconstitutional for Marbury to petition the Supreme Court for that document. Another thing that often comes up is the J Treaty, right? So what is the J Treaty? So let me give you some context on that. Oh, also the Marbury vs. Madison is the landmark case for judicial review. You guys should all know that. All right, so J Treaty. Um, J Treaty was what? Well, we had Washington. He sent um. John Jay to London to negotiate with the British about some, you know, nagging issues per se, right? And what were these nagging issues? Well, what happened was, um, the British they were like seizing American merchant ships. There were, uh, there were, you know, there were still British forces in American Northwest. There were still, um, they still wanted this commercial treaty, and they wanted compensation for slaves who left with their army after the war, right? 
So you know they pretty much they pretty much want to get back to the original footing after the war. But clearly, you know, Britain is not so intent on you know giving up all of these, right? So what, what does Britain do? Britain doesn't want to you know piss off America again. So they kind of you know um they kind of settle on just giving um just uh, Britain settles on just giving up the forts. So Britain gets rid of the forts and they get rid of some trade restrictions, right? So in return. Um, England to tax American goods, right? So let's look at that treaty, right? So what happens? British, the British get gets rid of forts and some trade restrictions, and England um, to tax some American goods. That's great. Um, great. And but in but as a side note, um, that the Americans didn't like is that let's say you had American, let's say you had I don't know German tea, and let's say you had British tea. British tea always won out, not because it was better, but because British always got um, you know, first picks. Right. All right. So that's not too bad. Um, America's got some some stuff of what they wanted, and um, you know you can't make everyone happy, right? Now, um, this was often actually called a success, right? Even though not everyone was happy because you know the British are still taxing the Americans, and um, not everything is gone, and British is a little happy. But why is everyone happy? Why? Well, because it averted war, right? Um, they were going to go to war over this, and you know no one really wanted to go to war because America's a new country, and British is severely broke. Great. So we have all of that. That's good to know. Now um, we have to talk about something, right? We have to talk about the two parties, right? Now there's the now two parties. They they pretty much come up a little bit later. I would say in like the 1780s, 1790s, something like that. So you don't have to know the dates, but you have to know that there's two parties, right? So you have the Democratic Republicans and you have the Federalists, right? Democratic Republicans. Think of them as like um, your uh, back. Remember when we talked about anti-federalists and federalists? Think of your Democratic Republicans as your anti-federalists, right? So Democratic Republicans, what do they want? They want to know a strong. Oh, another email. Hopefully that will hold on. Let me see if I can reply to that email. Sorry about that, guys. All right. All right. Great. So that's not too bad. All right. So we have what? We have the Democratic Republicans, right, and the uh, Federalists, right? So the Democratic Republicans, they wanted no strong central, they didn't want any um, straw central government, right? They, they, they were like the anti-Federalists, right? Um, they believed in industrial expansion, they were agriculture-based, um, Jefferson was part of them, James Madison was part of them, that's important. Um, then you have what? You have the Federalists. Federalists are like ordinary people in politics, they're like the general, you know, the general um, the general party, they, they, they believe in a strong sort of government, so what's the strong sort of government? The United States. The United States federal government has a lot of power. They believe in commercial interests, which is like small businesses and businesses. And they really were pro-British. Not in the sense of the support of the British, but they wanted to adopt a few British ideals because they felt they were effective. So after that, um, we have what? We have, oh, who, who supported Federalists? Well, um, Federalists, well, we had, well, we had uh, Jefferson, Madison supporting the Democratic Republicans, and we have Hamilton supporting Federalists. So that's what's important to know. Great. So I'm not scrolling down, really. That's, 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 that's not too bad. All right. So we have all of these to go. All right. So far, is there any questions, guys? Is there any, any questions? That would be pretty important to address now. Any questions, guys, so far? Is everyone still here? No one's sleeping. All right. How's one here? Guys, everyone here? There's a, there's a questions feature. You guys should use that just in case you have questions. All right? I think that's pretty important. I, I like that feature about Google Hangouts, actually. The fact that you can ask questions because I feel like no online streaming service really has a good... Good uh, streaming service. Great. No one has questions? You can type in a no there, that would be helpful so I know who's here. Everyone still here? Guys, come on, we should be able to ask questions. We should type in a there, that would be helpful to know who's here. <laughs> Guys? Is everyone here? So free is on here, so I'm just finish that. Uh, is everyone still here, guys? 
I still got five viewers, but I don't know. No one's replying. All right, great. No questions. I'm here. And email from Osman. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, Osman, what's wrong? Hey, now you made a panel with these passwords. Okay, great. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. All right. Moving on. Uh, what else do we have? So we're studying. So we did all of that. Well, why is my display power going off? Okay, so we did all that. So what were we talking about? We were talking about, I believe, where, where did we get to the J treaty? Yeah, we got to the J treaty, I believe. Um, did we talk about? Uh, oh, we're talking about the two parties now. But yeah, so we had uh, two parties. We have the Democratic Republicans. They were like your anti-federalists. They didn't believe in a strong central government. We have your federalists, which are like ordinary people, and they believe in a strong central government. Anti-federalists, Democratic Republicans. Who are they? Jefferson and Madison. And federalists. Who are they? Hamilton. Wait, whoa, new activity on your video. Let me just see this. This is, uh, sorry guys, um, oh, I have new comments. Ah, oh, I see, what sorry guys, let me just, this is really, really quickly, I've never done this before, and, um, it's always really good. Ah, oh, I see what's happening, so it looks like, um, ah, it looks like that, okay. All right, I see. This person says, "All right, go over essay topic." Sorry, I didn't mean to. Um, I'm gonna tell you who this person is actually. But okay, that's the beauty of Google Hangouts. I will go over essay topics actually, right? If you stick on, right? The idea about the essay is, um, let's say, let's say, pull out an essay, right? So you guys can't see the essay. Well, you guys can see the essay, but let's say pull out an essay. Um, even then, all the essay topics we're definitely gonna discuss. Um, they're not too bad to go over actually. I feel like um, if I go over these terms, right, so, so there's two types of essays, right? You have a DBQ essay and you have your thematic essay, right? And now for your DBQ essay, it's, it's really, really easy. You have all of those notes, you have all of those pictures, you have all of those questions, and those questions can guide you. Now, to get the highest score in DBQ essay, I'm sure teachers have told you, there has to be some outside information. Now, even your DBQ essay, right? So I'm looking at the 2013 essay. I'm looking at the 2013 essay. I'm looking at the 2013 um, DBQ. I'm looking at the 2013 DBQ essay, right? Now, hold on, I'm looking at the DBQ essay. Am I? Yeah, I am. I am looking at the DBQ essay. And guess what? Look, look, it says, it says, um, these cases include, so talk about these cases, useful documents, talk about Dred Scott versus Sandler, talk about Plessy versus Ferguson, talk about Brown versus Board of Ed, and then make an essay on that. And guess what? We're going to go over all of those topics in this lecture, right? We're going to talk in great length about Plessy versus Ferguson. We're going to talk about Dred Scott. Right? We're going to talk about all of these. Now, obviously, this is one essay topic, but even on other essay topics, we're definitely going to discuss them. We're going to talk about how to write them. Now, let's say you encounter something you haven't seen before. I'm going to talk about what happens when you have a war. Well, what are, what's always the result of a war? Well, obviously, there's new knowledge, jobs are created, and there's economic growth always during war. These are very important things that you can talk about. Now, in your thematic essay, in thematic essay, foreign policy, guess what? We're going to talk about every president, well, every ancient president, every U.S. history president's foreign policy. We're going to talk about George Washington. What did we say we had? Well, James Madison. What did we say we had? He had Thomas Jefferson. What did we say they had? They had an isolationist perspective, right? They didn't want to get Americans in trouble. We're going to talk about Teddy Roosevelt's um, uh, foreign policy. These are all important things we go, go over, right? We're going to talk about the Panama Canal. We're going to talk about Marshall Plan. We're going to talk about open door policy. Don't worry, guys. We're going to, we're going to go over all of these. That's the beauty of, you know, doing it turn space, right? So don't worry, whoever commented that on the YouTube video, I, 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 I got this. Don't worry. All right. That's wonderful. Now let's get back to the, let's get back to the content. I believe what we have to go over next is the Alien and Sedition Acts. The Alien and Sedition Acts, that is, oh, hold on. I have an incoming chat from Osman. Essay topics. Hold on, hold on, guys. I really don't want to distract. Maybe I should have another person deal with the comments, and that would be pretty helpful, right? Sorry, guys, it's just that I have, um,
Uh, Osman says he can hear me, but he can't see anything. Osman, well, that's a pretty big problem. Well, how you can fix that problem is you, I think you have slow internet connection. I really think that's a problem. Um, well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I could help you that way. Well, I have what? Uh, okay, great. So let's get back to work, guys. Um, Osman, I'm sorry if you can't see this. Honestly, we're not missing much. I'm not really writing anything. I could if I wanted to. Well, um, do you guys think it would be better if I wrote stuff down? Like, maybe I could write stuff about judicial review, right? How, like, you know, show you. Maybe I could do that. Does that help, guys? You guys want to write stuff down? Or do you guys want to just email me afterwards and I can just type up everything uh, I'm talking about? I think typing up everything I'm talking about is going to be a little more helpful, right? So you guys can just email me, right? Keep in mind that my email is naeem at rqmtutorial.com. And yeah, so after the chat, right, after this hangout, feel free to email me, right? Feel free. Naeem, I didn't really get this topic. Or Naeem, how about this as a topic? How would you approach this as a topic? What would you say to it? Or Naeem, uh, I'm really confused on this one. Or Naeem, um, can you go more in depth about Booker T. watching for anything, right? And, and feel free, I'll definitely reply by midnight tonight, all right? All right, so Osman, I'm sorry about that, but I'm, I really can't help you on my end. I think I am streaming video. I think I have the upload feed to stream video, so I'm not too worried about it on my part. So sorry about that. Let's get back to the work. Oh my god, I can't get back to the work because there is another comment. Okay, slow down. All right, I'll slow down. All right. Okay, so we have the Democratic Republicans. The Democratic Republicans did not want a strong central government, right? They didn't want a strong central government. Um, they were anti-federalist pretty much. And then we have the Federalists. The Federalists want a strong central government. That's really all you have to know. You have to know Jefferson, Madison, who are Democratic Republicans. You have to know Hamilton was a Federalist. Boom. Alien and Sedition Act. What the heck is an Alien and Sedition Act? Well, I'll tell you. Oh, and sedition acts were really meant to, you know, um, suppress or bring down recent immigrants who are generally Democrat Republicans. There we go. Who are the Democrat Republicans again? The people that didn't want to set a strong strong government. Now, if we think back, remember in our in the earlier lecture, well, who do I who did I say that the uh, anti-federalists were? Well, they were like small farmers, small people that no one cared about. The federalists are the people that everyone cares about. They're like the general people. Right, the anti-federalists, the Democrat Republicans, are like the re the rebellion people. They're like the, you know the small, the minorities, the people that no one really cares about. Right, but you know as time, you know they, they grow a larger following because of immigrants and stuff like that. But okay, Alien and Sedition Act. What happened? It was meant to bring down recent immigrants to America. What was the Alien Act? Well, it lengthened the residency requirement and had all aliens uh, register. Right. So what does that mean? That means in order for you to become a citizen, you have to be in America for a longer period of time. And obviously that's difficult when you have just um, when you have just you know entered America. Also what happens? Um, you um, during more time, um, aliens were or aliens as in like foreign people, not actual aliens, but aliens were allowed to be detained as in they, they could go to jail, right? And also the president of the United States at the time could um, and deport them at will, right? So if you didn't like one, boom, they're gone. I don't have to give any explanation. There's no trial, nothing, right? They're gone. Great. That's the Alien and Sedition Act, right? Now, no, that's the Alien Act, actually. The Sedition Act pretty much tried to control the speech against the government, as in these aliens, you know, maybe they could strike up a rebellion or maybe they're saying these rounds on the street, and we don't want that. So we're going to strike them down. They can get arrested at any time, and I can deport them. And aliens do not want to get deported because obviously America is the land of opportunity, right? So they don't want to get deported, and therefore they're not going to create these rebellions, and they know that the president can deport them at will, right? So the Sedition Act says, um, the Sedition Act is trying to control the speech against the government, and the Alien Act is pretty much saying, um, in order to become a citizen, you have to stay in America longer, and the president could deport you at will before you were a citizen. Great. That's the Alien and Sedition Act. Why was it implemented? To get rid of Democrat Republicans, to get rid of the people that were not Federalists, because the Federalists wanted their way. Now let's go on. We can talk about the Embargo Act. The Embargo Act is very, very interesting. The Embargo Act um, pretty much was about the British, right? So they're seizing American ships during the war with France, right? During the, the, the Napoleonic Wars, at least, the Napoleonic Wars. Um, and then what happens? Well, the U.S. is in a tough spot. 
because France is seizing also. So it's not just British that's seizing American ships, the France, the French are seizing American ships. Great. Now what, what's, what's the problem? Remember what we said? The U.S. wants to remain isolation. The U.S. wants to remain neutral. The U.S. does not want to create allies, does not want to create enemies. Well, now people are messing with the U.S. Oh, so what? Are they going to stay there? They're not going to do anything? Are they a little kid? No, they're not, right? So what happens? Jefferson, who's the president at that time, right, I believe. Yeah, so Jefferson utilized what's called an embargo, right? So what does this mean? It's like a ban on trade. Now, whoa, banning trade. Now, if you think about it this way, British is obviously exporting stuff, and French are obviously exporting stuff, and U.S. is exporting and importing, obviously, and consuming. Now, think about it this way. Let's say... Let's say um, I am giving you food because I have extra food. And let's say you're rejecting my food. Or you have no other opportunities to get food. What's going to happen to you? You're going to starve. That's what happened in the U.S. They, are, they were hurting themselves more than they were sending a message. They were really, really hurting themselves. So guess what happened? They realized they made a mistake. And, um, um, you know, they, they pretty much said, yeah, we made a mistake. Yeah, right. The embargo was a terrible idea and we should have never done it. Now let's move on. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? Oh, well, we're going to get to the Monroe Doctrine a little bit. I kind of grouped my Monroe lecture together so it makes more sense because the Monroe Doctrine follows very closely with the Rosa Corollary, so I kind of grouped them together so it makes more sense. But we're going to talk about Commodore Matthew Perry's visit to Japan. This is kind of um, improper because he actually made two visits to Japan, not one, right? In both times, he's, you know, he's trying to, you know, tell you uh, Japan, the Japanese, hey, you know, it's the United States you're dealing with. I want all the Japanese ports to be open for the U.S. I want this open trade policy. I want prisoners to be treated well, the U.S. prisoners that are in Japan. I, and guess what? The Japanese like, ha ha, this is the United States, you know. Uh, they got rejected the first time. So the Japanese got rejected the first time. But guess what? Matthew Perry, he knew, he pretty much knew he was going to get rejected. He came back, came back there, and guess what happened? He was like, all right, make the same demands again. But what happened? The second time, he came with ships. And guess what? He threatened, all right, so if you don't agree to any demands, I'm going to move closer and closer and closer to your major cities. And then, and then that's going to happen. What's going to happen? Well, I'm going to invade the Japanese. And now you have this imminent threat, right? So it's not like, you know, oh, I'm going to, you know, attack you and he's halfway across the world. No, he's right next to the Japanese. So now it's like, you know, I'm going to attack right now if you don't, if you don't agree with what I'm saying. So guess what? The Treaty of Kanagawa. That guaranteed that the shipwrecked Americans, those who were in prison, those who were imprisoned, um, would be saved, provided food, and obviously treated very, very well, right? And this ended the 200-year Japanese isolation policy, right? I believe it's 200 years. It's, yeah, 200 years. So this ended the 200-year Japanese isolation policy, which is the Japanese, just like the Americans, or rather isolationists. Well, Americans, you can close put them towards the neutralistic idea where, you know, they are doing trade and stuff. They're just not involving other people's wars and ideas like that. But the Japanese... They were isolationists to the max. They did not want to even commit to trade with others. There's a good reason they didn't, because they don't want to be honest with that idea. But okay. The Japanese agreed on Matthew Perry's second visit. Uh, hold on, guys. I have Osman here, and he just made a text. Yeah, we are going over court cases, Osman. Um, well, very quickly, Osman asked, can you review um, judicial review? Uh, yeah, well, judicial review is pretty much um, uh, the Supreme Court can look at the constitutionality of 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 a of an amendment or a law, right? So they can deem a law or amendment to be constitutional. Marbury versus Madison is the landmark case for judicial review. Now, if you go back and you scroll back in the video, well, after it's done, it's going to be uploaded. If you scroll back on the video, you can definitely learn about Marbury versus Madison, right? I talked about how uh, Marbury, William Marbury, he comes in, he says um, he pretty much. He's appointed as a midnight judge, right? And then uh, by John Adams, and then um, Jane, he he kind of goes against James Madison for not giving his commission. The Supreme Court says, "Yeah, you deserve your commission, but we have no right to um, supersede whatever the president says on that matter because we only have the right, based on whatever article, to um, say that uh, to say that a law is unconstitutional. We don't have the law. We don't have the right to compel the president to make to give you whatever, right?" Um, the Jay Treaty was actually pretty interesting. We talked about it. Washington sent John Jay to London, and what happened? To, uh, because the British were seizing American merchant ships, the forts were still in the American Northwest, and there was, uh, and they wanted compensation for the sl slaves that left, um, the left for the British Army. Uh, they eventually signed a treaty, 
and um, war was averted, which is the big thing. And um, even though almost everyone disliked the treaty, including the, uh, the Democrat Republicans, they couldn't do much about it. Got it, Osma, I hope that helps. We are going to go over all the cool things to do when we get to them. Okay, guys, so that was the quick review for Osma, and then we can continue on. So, Commodore Perry, he does good. Second time around, Japanese agree, Japanese American are trading, and Japanese are freeing some American um, captives, and they are treating the ones that are still remaining in Japan. Well, that's good. Uh, win -win. Better than the J Treaty. All right, the Emancipation Proclamation. That's always cool. That's interesting to talk about. Emancipation Proclamation. Well, we all know we have Abraham Lincoln's involved. We all know in emancipating slaves, freeing slaves. Great. Guess what? It wasn't actually freeing slaves. Uh, it was pretty much the first step towards outlawing slavery. It didn't exactly outlaw slavery, but the main focus of the Emancipation Proclamation, which many people get wrong, was it was a time, it was a really civil war time, right? So now what happens? What's Abraham Lincoln's main goal? Well, his secondary goal in his head, people thought his main goal was, guess what? I want to get rid of slaves. And yeah, that was kind of a large goal, but a larger goal than that was to keep the United States sovereign. What does that mean? United as one, as one power. So the Emancipation Proclamation's central, main focus was not to help the slaves, but to keep the United States as one sovereign power. Cool. Very cool, guys. Got it? Makes sense? That's the Emancipation Proclamation delivered by Abraham Lincoln himself. Moving on. Who do we have? We have none other than Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois. You know, they're both African... They both believe that African Americans should have increased civil rights. Yeah. Amer African Americans deserve increased civil rights. They, they give work hard. Just be all I know about them. They're not too important people. Well, I don't want to offend anyone that you know that loves them, but they're not too important. Booker T. Washington, in particular, you know what he do? He advocated vocational training for African Americans. All right? Cool. Isolated class policies we talked about. Um, you know, staying out of other people's problems. You know, isolations. You know, not trading with others completely to the extreme. No interaction with other countries. Cool. Yellow journalism. Interesting. Yellow journalism, type of journalism that's what? That's used, uh, you know, pretty much sell newspaper. I want headlines. I want eye-catching headlines. So what are you going to do, Well, Guess what? There's no news. So what are you going to do? Well, you're going to create fake, fake headlines, right? So the, what was yellow journalism? Creating fake headlines based on little, no legitimate actual evidence. So, you know, you'd be like, oh, the scandal happened here. The president was seen with this. Fake headlines. Think of, like, gossip, right? Think of, like, TMZ when you think of yellow journalism, right? Creating, you know, presenting um, well-researched news, you know, presenting presenting news, you know, to sell, right? Pretty much, sell newspaper, create headlines, fake scandals. Got it? No real news. Panama Canal, Panama Canal. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Oh, you guys can't even see that. So let me just, you know, let you see that. Hopefully, everyone got my email down in case you need to ask any questions. You guys, feel free after the podcast. I can definitely review it with you guys. Good luck tomorrow. Panama Canal. What can I say about Panama Canal? All right, Panama Canal. Um, Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt, important guy in the in the Panama Canal business. Um, so what does he do? Um, uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, what does he do? Um, he pretty much says, uh, well, well, I want to get the country up and started. I want to create more business. I want people to move around a lot more goods. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to have American and British leaders and British businessmen, um, you know, wanting to ship goods quickly and cheaply between the Atlantic and Pacific coast. So what do I do? Well, I create this canal, boom, jobs, and guess what? Transport. Easy. Teddy Roosevelt was responsible for that. Got to make sure you know that. Teddy Roosevelt. Annexation of Cuba we're going to get to in a little bit when, when it comes up with the rest of the lecture. Moving on, we have what? The open door policy. That's important. So open door policy goes like this. Like all nations should have equal access to any of the forces open to trade. And guess what country? It's China. Right? Open their policy, China. What does it say? Every single great power, every single important nation should have the ability to access all of the force in China. So all equal all nations should given should be given equal rights, equal privilege, per se, when dealing with China. Great. Um also only the Chinese government could collect taxes on trade and um no great power could, you know, have exemptions or you know, go for exceptions, you know, try to, you know, weasel the rain. No. Every great power has the same privileges in China. 
pretty much open door policy. Open door, open door sitting, what that was an open door, every great country, same privilege in China. All right, that was a lot to cover. Whoa, I have a couple of chat messages. This Osman, I think he just replied to him. This would be fine. On the YouTube end, everyone is good. Everyone is good so far. Just making sure there's no extra comments. I see a message. Essay topics we're going to go over. I have a reminder on my on for that. Um, is there any other any questions so far, guys? Any questions? Am I going too fast? Any comment comments? Any complaints? Anything, guys? Definitely want to hear the complaints before I keep on going. We have done this for about, I would say, um, I don't know, how long have we done this? Maybe some of you know. Subtract 20 minutes because I was just talking about for 20 minutes at the start. But any complaints, guys? So far, are we good? Good. Yes. No. Maybe so. Maybe I should write a little more. Would that be helpful? Does anyone want me to write a little more? Does that work, or do you guys just want me to send you an email of like you know what I'm saying afterwards? Maybe writing will help you guys. Maybe that will um, internalize some stuff with you. I really want to write as I could go on because that's why my Wacom tablet with me. But uh, I don't know. I guess it's all easy. But I guess I could write if you want me to, guys. So let me know. If you think writing is gonna help, then I think um, I'm definitely gonna write. But if you feel like it's not necessary and lecturing is good, then lecturing it is. Let me know, guys. Damn, the very slow feedback. Oh, I do have some feedback. All right, Aspen says, can you go a little bit slower? Yeah, I can go a little bit slower for Yasmin. And can we watch this again after it's over? Yes, it will be uploaded to YouTube after it's over. Writing and writing, yes. Um, okay, writing, we have one for writing. I was kind of hoping everyone would be like, oh, lecture is fine. <laughs> but um, I guess we can do some writing. But keep in mind that if you email me afterwards, guys, um, you know, the email, naeem at arkimco.com, if you email me afterwards, um, I can definitely send you over, you know, type of everything I've said and transcribe it. Because, you know, I have this transcription software, or I don't even know what it's called anymore. But, yeah, I have this transcription software, and I can, you know, type of everything I've said. That's pretty cool, right? Got it? Any other complaints, guys? Any questions? Any questions, guys? I've just put down on everyone's. Everyone, any questions, guys? Everyone here? I have four or five viewers. That's not too bad, I guess. <laughs> any questions? We're good? Two-minute intermission. People need water. Oh, where's my water? Huh. Oh, there's my water. Got my water. All right, guys. Ready? Ready for more? Ready, guys? Any questions? No comments? No questions? No YouTube comments? No messages? We're good to go? I'll give everyone 30 seconds. I'll definitely try to go a little bit sore for you, Osman. No comments, no questions, we're good. Helpful, guys. All right, well, looks like no one's talking. No one's asking questions. Sure, guys, no questions? Yes. No questions so far, guys? No questions? We're good? All right. Well, no questions. No questions. All right, sound weird, definitely. <laughs> All right. Let's get to work. Back to work. Okay, so what do we have? Um, I promised I was going to talk a little bit slower, so I guess I have to do that. All right, Fox Rebellion, I believe is what we're up to. Oh, open door policy. Oh, Rosa Corollary, I also moved down a little bit because we we're going to talk a lot about Teddy Rosa and what he did. So, Fox Rebellion. What do we have to know about the Fox Rebellion? Well, I'm not trying to show us really U.S. U.S. history because really Chinese is really it's a Chinese problem where they try to drive all the foreigners out of China, and the boxers 
political party there tried to gain control in China due to China's facing hardships, right? So China's hardships, boxers gain power, boxers try to drive all the foreigners from China. Boom. Moving on, what do we have? Well, now, let's talk about, whoa, 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 whoa. Looks like, yeah. President Teddy Roosevelt. This is where we're going to talk about all the stuff I love for Teddy Roosevelt. We're going to talk about why Teddy Roosevelt is important. We're going to talk about everything you need to know about President Theodore Roosevelt. So, Theodore Roosevelt, he gained a reputation as a trust buster. Why? Because he called out for the breakup of many monopolistic companies, right? So, Teddy Roosevelt hated large companies. He loved small companies, small businesses. That was his domestic policy. Now, moving on, Monroe Doctrine. Monroe Doctrine, what do we have over the Monroe Doctrine? That's very, very important. It comes up in like every single region, so pay attention. Monroe Doctrine, um, it was supported by Reagan, Roosevelt, and Kennedy, pretty much said that any further efforts by European nations to colonize land or interfere with states in North or South America would be viewed as acts of aggression requiring U.S. Interest. What does that mean? Well, here's what that means. That means that if the Euro, if you if any European nation decides to start uh, making making trouble with any country in North or South America, the United States would take action. That's precisely what it says. Now, this is, here's the issue. The Monroe Doctrine also notes that the U.S. would neither interfere with existing European colonies nor meddle with the internal concerns of European countries. Kind of ironic, no? At first you're like, oh, let's... Uh, at first, you're like, oh, let's um, let's you know, let's we're gonna we're gonna intervene if you mess with if if you create trouble. And the other person's like, oh, well, we're not gonna intervene. Well, guess what? Um, what the second part says is that at first we're initially not gonna involve ourselves in your problem, but if any European nation decides to create trouble in North or South America, we are going to intervene. Supported by Reagan, Roosevelt, Kennedy. Boom. Moving on, the Roosevelt Corollary. This is why it follows right from the Monroe Doctrine. Beautiful topic to go over after we talk about the Monroe Doctrine. So what does what Carl Carlos say? It says the U.S. will intervene in conflicts between European countries and Latin American countries, you know, the South America, to enforce legitimate claims of European powers. What does that mean? Well, let's get involved in other people's politics. Who said it? Teddy Roosevelt. Interesting, right? So the Monroe Doctrine says, we're not going to mess with you. We're going to mess with you if... We are going to mess with you if you involve yourselves in Latin American conflicts. What does Rolf and Carlos say? We're not, we're, well, we will mess with you if, uh, we, we will get in between and we will support the European to enforce the legitimate claims of the European powers. Got it, guys? Got it? So the Monroe Doctrine says what? Initially, we are not going to mess with you. But if you mess with any, um, any, Latin, Ameri any Latin American country, we are going to, you know, intervene. And what does Rolf and Carlos say? Well, um, the U.S. is going to intervene and, you know, make sure that any legitimate claim made by European powers is supported. And guess what? We're getting involved in other people's politics. Now, what? Another Roosevelt policy in Roosevelt. The Roosevelt Square Deal. Came up on like two readings out of the seven or eight I looked at. The Roosevelt Square Deal. What's that? It's pretty much Roosevelt's domestic policy. Let's conserve natural resources. Let's control the big, big corporations. Let's, um, let's, be, let's have consumer protection. Let's, let's, it's like a very progressive kind of idea, right? It's helped middle class, protected businesses from the evil customers, you know, helping everyone out, progressing America to a larger business capital than it was, right? That's the Rosa Square deal. Domestic policy, supporting small business. Conserving natural resources. Great. Now, notice I, I talked about the Rosa Square deal as very progressive. Guess what we're getting into? We're getting into the progressive era. The Progressive Era has what? Amendments concerning, you know, the income tax, the direct election of senators, prohibition, which is, you know, no alcohol and stuff, women's suffrage enacted. That all happened in the Progressive Era. And guess what? That whole entire era was, let's try to limit the power of big business. And guess who supported it? Woodrow Wilson and your favorite, Teddy Roosevelt. Moving on. Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s. I'm honestly a very small topic, you know, Harlem, a lot of culture, a lot of stuff got infused in America, good stuff, culture, good, whatever, music, arts, whatever you want to say, that kind of thing. Great Depression, honestly I don't want to go too much into this, but we should all know, stock crash, Black Tuesday led to Great Depression, 
It preceded World War II. Very important. Preceded World War II. Why is it important? Whoa, Great Depression, World War II. World War II stopped, pretty much stopped the Great Depression. Why? Why do I say that? In World War II, they needed weapons, they needed knowledge, they needed scientific research, they needed all of these jobs. And guess what? World War II needed these jobs after the Great Depression. Also, you know, obviously there was a New Deal and stuff like that that helped also. Right? That was pretty important. The New Deal was also very important, not just uh, World War II, but the New Deal was also pretty important. Okay, well, after the Great Depression, well, well, what happened after the Great Depression? Okay, well, we have the Dust Bowl, right? Keep in mind, you have the Roaring Twenties, the 1920s, right? And that's where the Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s was a really great times. And then you have the Dust Bowl. What happened to the Dust Bowl? Well, people say it's, you know, nature, but no, it's really farmers' fault. They were over, they were over-cultivating the land, right? They were over-cultivating the land. They were, you know, taking out too much plants, they were, they were, Taking out too much, you know, what they're, they're over cultivating. There, there was too much. There was too much. What's called agrarian, agriculture-based economy. So you know, there was a graft mechanization. They were using tools and machinery to, you know, take all this fruit out and all this plants out and whatever, right? They these, these, you know, tractors and whatever. And guess what? Eventually, you just have no more land. You just have no, not no more land, but no more cultivated land. You know, all the topsoil is like you know dry. You have to extract all the moisture. Guess what? It all blows away like sand. All right? That's how you have a dust bowl. It greatly, it greatly damaged the ecology and other stuff like that. Great. Moving on. All right. Uh, looks like I have four viewers. I think they dropped. Did one person leave? Oh my gosh. Hold on, guys. Let me, let me try to figure out something. Refresh on my things. New message. Writing yes. Okay. okay. Oh, what else is there? Um, how are you doing so far? Good, good guys. Everyone can hear just fine. I'm not using an external microphone. I'm just using my laptop's microphone, actually, which I don't know if it's too great, but hopefully it works. Any questions, guys? <laughs> Any questions, guys? Why is it in the entertainment category? Definitely not should not be in the entertainment category, it should be in the education category. Maybe that's what I'm not getting things. Any questions guys so far? Any questions? Any questions guys? Alright, I need some feedback. Any questions guys? Any questions before we go on to Franklin Delano Roosevelt? Why did he choose to increase the number of justices? Any questions? Guys, say no questions. I need to make sure that you know people are still listening. That's the worst part about online sessions. You're not entirely sure if anyone's listening to you. Any questions, guys? Osman, you can chat. Any questions? Emails, comments, YouTube, whatever you guys need to do. Any questions, guys? Don't wait. Maybe like a minute. You guys can, you know, just type no questions in the questions box or comment to no questions or. Okay. Osman says no questions. Faria says no. That's, that's a good start. That's 50% of my population, guys. There's two other viewers. Just <laughs> gonna give everyone 30 seconds, guys. 30 seconds. I'm just drinking a lot of water now. Ask an email saying, can you type 
up what you said and send it. Yep, well, of course I can, guys. So if you need what I typed, if you need what I said, I can type it all up, or I can have my application transcribe it, and I'll be happy to ship it over to you guys. We'll email it over, obviously. All right, thirty seconds over. My water break is done. Okay. Based on the document, everyone sees the document. We're on page two of five. Whoa. A lot to go, right? A lot to go. Moving on. Marshall Plan. I'm going to go a little bit. Can we have a more interactive session? Sure, Afsana. How would I do that, though? I want to have a more interactive session, but I feel like, I don't know, maybe the interface isn't there yet. Oh, guys, that's why um. Those who are in trig, that's why I'm moving the trig session over to the center, right? So the trigonometry session, right? Anyone's free to come. The trigonometry session, I said the husband could stick in free calc. But the trig session is going to be at the center. So you guys can ask more questions. I feel like the E session thing is great, but um, is not as good as a trig It's not as good as a as an in the center session, right? So you guys are pretty calm, right? You guys can go tomorrow, five to eight. Now five to eight is the standard time, right? Well, guess what? I'm gonna be there from four, right? And we could stay as late as you guys need to, right? So trigonometry tomorrow. We're not gonna have the online session. We're gonna do it based on um, at the center. Right, I feel like we're in the center. We know we have projector. We can go over a ton of questions. And I think it's a better, better, better value. Can we have an actual hangout where everyone talks? Hmm. We can. Can we do that? I think that's what happens, right? I think we can have ten people talk at once, but I'm not entirely sure how to do that right now. Let me see. Maybe I can invite someone. Is this better? I mean, this is just a text kind of thing. Hold on, guys. I believe that we can have 10 people hangouts. Oh, I think it's a hangout on air. Maybe that's why, but I, I think I can have collaborator or something. Any ideas on how to make it better, guys? Maybe for next time, maybe for this time. Hmm. Are you going to type up all of this on a document? Yes, I am going to type up all of this into a document. I do have transcription software also, so that will help. I would say, um, uh, I would say I can get it typed. Well, uh, um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we could end this early, and maybe would would everyone prefer I just type everything up? Would that be a better idea? And then you guys can just study that. Maybe I'm speaking too fast. Maybe the interactive portion isn't there yet. Maybe you guys want to do it that way. Like maybe I could type all the terms up, like all the stuff up. Maybe that'd be better. Any ideas on that? Um, Afsana, yeah, on Gmail or Yahoo. Um, I, uh, um, the thing is, a hangout on air is supposed to be a really nice interface, and I'm supposed to. As stupid as that sounds, um, I'm not entirely sure on how I invite. I guess I can. Let me see. Let me see. You know what? Just give me one second, guys. I'm gonna. I'm pretty sure I can invite you guys. Let me just see if I can uh, invite you guys. Invite people on Google Hangouts on Air.
Uh, all right. Um, as for you, yes, that'd be great. Where to be able to download it? Well, uh, what you could do is, well, I guess um, you can email me at naeem at rqmtutorial.com and, uh, and you could definitely download it from there, right? Well, I can email you the file. You're going to be downloading it, right? And again, the email is naeem at rqmtutorial.com. Really awesome, interesting. Afsana, you said to invite you guys, but how, how do I invite someone? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure on how I invite someone. That's the idea. Maybe I should research this before I did this. But uh Wait, try this guys. Hold on, guys. Um, I put something in the chat. Try that. I think that will allow you to join. Or maybe I can do a normal hangout instead of a hangout on air. And that would um, that would be better, I guess, right? I think the normal hangout on uh. Hmm. All right, guys, let me see what I can do here. Well, I don't want to waste your time, guys, because you do have regions tomorrow. Um, I'll do one. What should I do? Um, let me see. All right, so yes, normal hangout is better. Okay, I'm gonna close this hangout, guys. I'm gonna go on to a normal hangout. All right. Um, wait, can Osman still watch? Osman, do you have a? Are you on Gmail? Are you on Gmail? I'm not really sure if Asman is on Gmail. No, he's on AOL. Does that work? Asana, does, do you know if you like, can invite a non-Gmail person to a... Hmm, thank you, Asana. I just read the email. Alright, I'm going to end this chat for now. I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's working as well. Hopefully we can work on the technology a little bit better. And then we can do it. But, alright guys. Uh, if you need the document, make sure you email me. That would be wonderful. And, bye.